Hello everyone, welcome back to Altium Academy. I'm your host, Zach Peterson, and today we're gonna to be answering a viewer question about designing and placing mouse bytes in PCB panels. Now, I'm gonna run over mouse bytes in this video, but I'm also gonna run over an alternative, which is V-score grooves. So you can use both of these methods to design a panel, which you can then use to detach your PCBs by hand and then take them into assembly. First, we're gonna jump onto the board and we're gonna see how to design this stuff. And then I'm gonna show you how to do it in Ultimate Designer. Let's get started. Before we get started, let's take a look at that viewer question. Naeem Antu writes, Hi Zach, can you please create a video on adding mouse bytes when panelizing a PCB using the embedded board array tool? I sure can, Naeem. For those of you who aren't aware, the embedded board array tool is a tool in Altium Designer that you can use to create your own PCB panels. Now, what the embedded board array tool does is it allows you to duplicate your PCB across a panel and you can put in whatever arrangement you like. What it doesn't do is it doesn't define a depanelization method. That is your job as a designer. So I'm gonna show you two prominent methods, adding mouse bytes and then v-scoring. And then I'm gonna show you how to apply these with the embedded board array tool in Altium Designer. First, I'm gonna give a quick explanation of mouse bytes. And then we'll look briefly at v-scoring before we jump into Altium Designer. So let's suppose we have a PCB here, and we have another PCB that we're going to put into a panel. Normally with high volume or with automated detachment, you would just route out all the material in between these two boards and they would just fall out and you'd have a nice clean edge. But of course, if you wanna do hand depanelization, what you would then do is leave a small amount of material here rather than routing out everything between these two boards. So here we would have a small circular area here and a small circular area here. And this is where we're gonna put our mouse bytes. Now, when we're arranging our mouse bytes between these two boards, we wanna place them such that they are tangential to the board edge as close as possible. And same thing up here with the next board. We want to place these such that they are tangential to the board edge as close as possible. The reason we don't wanna bring these uh, mouse bytes into the board is because there could be planes or copper in that board. And of course, if the mouse bytes go into the board, let's say like this, then of course part of that hole goes into the board and then you risk hitting a trace or hitting a plane. And then some of that copper could show through the board edge. So we prefer that these be tangential as close as possible to the board edge here. Same thing here along this edge and along this edge. Now, what this allows us to do is it allows us to basically take a completed PCB layout and immediately put it into a panel and then start applying these mouse bites, and then we don't have to worry about any copper peeking through the board edge after depanelization. So now, I just wanna look a little bit more at the mouse bite detail and look at how large these holes need to be and how far out you should space them. So here I'm drawing our route path, and then we have our other route path, and then our board edge basically just goes like this. Here when we start placing these holes, we wanna place one reasonably close to the edge of the route path, and then we would place another one here, another one here. And usually you'll find anywhere from three to five or even six holes in one of these mouse bites. So here we of course have a hole edge to hole edge spacing. This is going to be about 0.3 millimeters. And then we also have a hole diameter. This hole diameter can be, for example, 0.5 millimeters. So these are just typical examples. These are not hard requirements. Now what happens is once this is broken off, you're gonna have little pieces of material that are left over right here in between these holes. And we can actually see some of that material if we take a look at a board under the microscope. Here what we're looking at in this microscope image is detached mouse bites along the edge of a test circuit board that I built sometime in the past. Now you can see some of the material left over and you can even see the curvature of the drill hole that was drilled into the panel. So this is pretty typical. You'll see some material that's left over like this and what you'll then usually do is file that down so that the edge is smooth. So the last parameter here is the size of this route path. Now this route path between here and here could be, for example, 1.5 millimeters to 
two millimeters. Really depends on the density of boards that you need in your panel, but this is an acceptable range for the size of this route path. Now let's take a look at V-scoring. So with V-scoring, we basically have the same kind of thing where we have some PCBs that are laid up in a panel and we would basically just have the same kind of arrangement between our two rectangular boards. Here, we need to apply enough spacing for the V-score tool to get in between these two boards. So what's a typical value? Well, I've done boards where we've done it at 70 mil in between the two PCBs in the panel. That's plenty of room here. The reason we want to have that much room is, of course, like I said, there's going to be a tool that's actually slicing along uh, this panel in order to break apart those two boards. Now, this is going to leave some blank space right here. Basically, you'd have 35 mils right here, and then you'd have 35 mils right here of just blank PCB. So you can remove that if you want, but it really doesn't harm anything to just leave it. Now, one thing that you can do if you're planning on V-scoring is you can take these two boards and you can put them into the panel literally right next to each other. Then what do we need to do with the copper features in the PCB? If this is our V-score line right between these two boards, we need to make sure that we apply enough clearance around this board edge so that we don't have any risk of any copper showing through this board edge. So this is where, if we look between the two PCBs, we might expect that 70 mil clearance or whatever clearance it is required by your fabricator to then arise. So if we have, let's say, 70 mil right here, that's a 35 mil requirement on each board for the board edge clearance rule. So you would want to make sure that you set that up in your design rules and then account for that when you're doing your layout and routing. So now let's take a look at how to apply all of this inside of Altium Designer. So here I have one of our projects open that was sent in by John Hatfield for our one minute design review series. And inside the same project, I've created a blank PCB. And this PCB is going to be our panel. And it's a nine inch by 12 inch panel. Now in order to place an embedded board array, I just go to the place option and then click embedded board array slash panelize. And then I can basically just click somewhere. And then here I have to select the source PCB. So once I select this item, I go over here, select the PCB document. I'm gonna select the main PCB layout. And then you can see here, it appears inside of this panel. Then what we can do is automatically duplicate it. I just double click on it. We have some spacing. We have a row margin and column margin. What I can do is apply, let's say, two millimeter column margin, two millimeter row margin. That's gonna be plenty based on what we saw earlier. And then I can duplicate this out. So let's say I wanna apply four panels and five rows. If I just hit okay, you can see it all magically appears. Four by five didn't work out so well because obviously the boards extend off the edge. So let's maybe redo this so it is a four by three array. And now we've got 12 boards in this nine by 12 panel. Now, the way that this is set up is of course, you have this nine by 12 panel, but if you zoom in here in between the boards, we don't have any of those features that we would expect for depanelization. So we don't have any of the mouse bites and we don't have V-scoring. If we wanted to apply V-scoring, we would want to add that as a fabrication note. And I'll show you how to do that in just a moment with a different project. But here, if we wanted to apply, let's say, mouse bites for depanelization, I would need to add those in manually. So there are a couple of simple ways to do that. Really, we just need to draw in two sets of objects. First object we need to draw in is of course a board cutout, and we can do that just using the line tool. So here if I just select the line tool and I start drawing this in, I just wanna change the width to match the spacing between my boards. You can see here I have a nice clean line. And when I draw this in, I can then select it. I go up to tools. Convert, create board cutout from selected primitives. So it's gonna give you this message here, just click yes, and then it will create that board cutout. Now if I select this and delete it, bam, you see right there, we have a nice clean board cutout. Let's just copy this over down here, and we'll leave a little space here. So this space right in between our boards, we have a little bit of margin here, so we would need to adjust that. But this would be the region where we would want to apply our holes for our mouse bites. So as I mentioned earlier, we want those holes for those mouse bites to be tangential to this board edge. So to create those holes, we can just use the pad tool. And we're basically using the exact same tool that we would use to apply, for example, non-plated holes anywhere else in the design. So here, I'm just gonna select a designator of zero. 
I'm gonna set this as multi-layer, and then I'm gonna go down here, and I need to choose a hole size and a pad size. So for this, I'm gonna make my hole size half a millimeter, I'm gonna make my pad size also half a millimeter, half a millimeter, and then I want this to be a non-plated hole. So I just deselect the plated option, and then you'll wanna put in a tolerance here. Um, I usually do three mils, you can put in whatever your fabric requires. But here, this is our first hole. With this hole applied, we can then, of course, duplicate this down this length. Now you can see here, there's this little gray band around this hole. What is that? That's actually the solder mask opening. And we can disable that solder mask opening by just going in here, selecting top solder, and then setting a manual expansion value of zero millimeters. So now it's gonna be much easier for us to move this over and adjust the position so that it's tangential to the board edge. So we would wanna just bunch this over just a little bit. And of course, with the snap tool on, it makes it a little difficult. So here, if I just turn off snapping on the current layer and then also turn off the grid snap, here it's gonna be much easier to just move this over so it's right at the right position. Then we would wanna duplicate this down. So of course, I can select it. I would then select this and copy it down. And of course, as I copy it down, I need to apply the correct spacing in between these pads. Just duplicate this down the entire way until I get to the desired number of holes, then you have your mouse bites. So I'm gonna let all of you guys who are watching just do this on your own because it's pretty simple. Once you have your mouse bites placed and then you have everything duplicated to where you want it, what you can then do is just select the board cutout regions and then select the mouse bites and then select a reference point anywhere in this design. Once you select this reference point, for example, right here in this corner, you can then copy this over to the next board in the array, and then you see they appear over here, then they appear over here on the third one, and we can just copy this over. Now here, of course, we see that I put the mouse bites on the left side, but I didn't put them on the right side. Well, it's pretty easy to put them on the right side, of course, I would just copy all of this, hit a Control C, select a reference point, can copy them over here to the right. So those are our mouse bites. We can of course do that horizontal too. Now we wanna place enough of these mouse bites so that we still have robust mechanical support for the board. These boards are a little large, so we would wanna maybe put a couple of extra mouse bites here on this same edge, and then maybe one on the bottom, and then maybe one on the top. So I think in total for this board, you might have six mouse bites, two on the long edges, and then one on each of the short edges. Now, what about V-scoring? Well, in some ways, defining V-score regions is both easier and more difficult. Now, if you're drawing out your own GD&T specifications for V-score region, you would actually need to include that in your fab drawing. You don't need to really draw anything here inside of the panel. However, what you could do is generate a mechanical drawing for the panel that shows the V-score regions. So I would definitely recommend doing that. Here, what I'm gonna show you in this layout is an example project that basically has three boards which are detached from a panel, and then there's a V-score in between these boards that you then allows the designer to just break them apart, and then you could have three separate boards from this one layout. You can see I've placed these guides, and these guides vertically define the V-score region. Now, in the corresponding fab drawing, you can see here that I've also listed the score region using some dimensions. So you have one right here at one and a half inches, and then another one here at three inches. Now, one thing that you want to include is V-score detail. And so V-score detail basically looks just like this little drawing I have on screen. This was a screenshot from another drawing which was provided by the customer. You could, of course, draw this yourself if you want to, but the point here is that you wanna show a V-score detail that basically shows how much material is left over and what the angle is for that score in order for this to be fabricated into a panel. So what this V-score detail drawing is basically showing is the amount of material that's going to be left over after applying the V-score on the top and bottom surfaces. So that's gonna determine how difficult or how easy it is to break apart these boards that are in this layout. If you've never done this before, you could of course ask your fab house what V-score detail they need in their fab drawing or what they can apply. They should be able to send you an example fabrication drawing or an example V-score detail drawing so that you can include it in your fabrication drawing. And of course, a little screenshot like this is perfectly fine. If you wanna draw it yourself, you can do that too. 
Thanks for watching this video, everybody. Make sure to hit that subscribe button. You'll be able to keep up with all of our tutorials and, of course, podcast episodes as they come out. Make sure to leave a like and, of course, leave a comment in the comment section. And last but not least, don't forget to call your fabricator, folks. Yeah.